Squarespace has got tons and tons of templates that build themselves as portfolio websites. And it has quite a robust portfolio system and it is really good on paper for those looking to display their work to the world. But there's only one downside and that is there's a limit when it comes to the amount of portfolio items you can have on a Squarespace website. Now, I'm not going to keep you in the dark as to how many you can have on the website. The limit is 40 items. So if you want to click off the video now, then you can do so. You can click off and go and look and go and look at something else. But if you want to stay and watch on, then I'm going to show you how we can circumvent that 40 page limit and create essentially what is a limitless portfolio. Okay, so welcome to the Code Examples website. I'm going to show you how a portfolio will look if we were to go with Squarespace's native portfolio. And then I'm going to show you the sacrifices we have to make and the workarounds we have to make to basically circumvent the 40 uh, portfolio item limit. So if we click plus and we go to portfolio, you can see we've got a few options here. Let's just go with a nice simple grid. We'll open this up. And then you can see we can add different effects to it. So if I go to edit section and then you can have grid simple follow care. So that changes the image when we hover, which is kind of cool, but I think it's a bit messy to be honest. Then we've got hover fixed. So the image just comes up in the center. We've got hover background, which I think is probably the coolest. And then we've got grid overlay, which is what a lot of people go for. Now, this is great. If you, you know, if you have less than 40 items, then brilliant. You go inside and it's just a, a pretty basic setup. But if you've got over 40 items, then what, what are you going to do? You can't go, you can't create two portfolios. And I found this out the hard way because I spent the best part of three days putting together my portfolio. I'd completely reworked it from what I had. I'd written out everything, designed it all up, and I went to add the 41st item, and then I was like, what is going on? And then I had a Google, and then I saw, oh, right, you can only add 40 items. And this isn't clear. It's such a bizarre oversight, and I, I love Squarespace. I literally build day in, day out on the platform. But this is scandalous scandalous so with that in mind i want to show you an example on my own site and that is here so i've set up if we go to bikerauthor.com this is my website and then if we click into portfolio on the front end this looks like any old portfolio this looks like it could be set up via the standard portfolio section Obviously, I've added code to get this uh, this cool effect, which we may we may come on to in a in a different video. But you can see if I click through, so I done Dame Kelly Holmes, she's a British Olympian, a well, two time gold medalist. I'm selling a short there, so I done her website, and you can see this looks exactly the same on the front as a portfolio section would look. So we go into the portfolio item, we've got our title, we've got you know some text who the client was, the industry, a little bit more. And then what, what I've done is I've coded in the website, as you can see here. So this is, it acts as an iframe, but really it's a, it's a PNG, it's a screenshot that the user can scroll through. And then a simple CTA, and then we've got navigation down at the bottom, just like you have in a portfolio, where users can scroll between all of the different projects that you've done and you want to showcase. Right, so you can see I've done it and it works. What we essentially need to do is create a blog, but no one's going to know it's a blog. Only we're going to know it's a blog. So what we do is we go into pages, we add a blog, and what we do is we call this portfolio or case studies or whatever you want to call it. And now you can see this can be our portfolio. And the good thing about blogs on Squarespace is, to my knowledge, they're completely limitless, and we can do anything we want essentially with enough code we can change it to be styled you know however you want but for the basics we can set it up in a, a basic grid side by side so simple setup like this you've got a masonry blog like so and you can change the columns this just means that 
if you have, for instance, an image here that's cropped to be portrait and then one next to it that's landscape, it will go, like, it will fit, fit all together. I'm doing a terrible disservice <laughs> to a masonry blog there, um, but you can see if you try it. Basic grid and then alternating side by side like this. And then obviously you can play around with the spacing and the aspect ratios as well. I am going to stick with a basic grid block. I think this works well. I think it presents the information really in a really slick manner. And I find this is the best way for clients to navigate through or potential clients to navigate through a site. So I'm going to set this up how I would. We'll go through it together. So we've got the basic grid. I actually like the spacing that we already have, but we can change the aspect ratio. Let's put that to square. So the user can see more of um, what we're showcasing basically from the off. Then I want to align the text in the center. I think we can get rid of the read more link because the read more kind of makes it seem like it is a blog still. If we take that out and we essentially have the title of the project, and then a quick excerpt underneath. Or what we can do is change that excerpt to say view more. So if we save this, these are going to be all of our portfolio items. Yes, they're called blogs, but no one knows that. No one's going to notice on the front end. And no one's going to be looking, to be honest. No one's going to catch you out and go, that's not a portfolio section, that's a blog section. No one cares. And no one even knows, to be honest. So let's just customize project one. We'll call this project one. And if we click up here, we get to access the back end of the project. So we'll just change this. And we're going to change this to whatever image you want. I'm just going to use something simple for now. Let's go with this. And on the excerpt, I kind of want to keep this the same for everything, just to reduce my workload when I'm adding portfolio items in. So let's just do view project. And then what are we going to call this? Project one. So we'll just copy this in. And then what we need to do, if we're going to make this the view project CTA or call to action, we're going to add a link. Then we're going to do forward slash portfolio forward slash project one to match the URL slug like so. Then we're going to save that. And then what you can, you can put anything you want in here. It's exactly like building a drag and drop page on Squarespace. So let's put, let's set it up like the by Crawford website. So industry, we'll just put the industry here make this bold tell you what we'll put a line up here to separate that and then we'll put another text block up here and then we'll add some lot of mips and text in here just to pad it out so we've got industry then we'll add another text block we'll move that across to here and then we'll move that there and then we'll call it client name client name here so basically what we're going to do is just create a template client name here and you can add something else in here if you want let's say if you want to be like ultra transparent you could put in budget and then we'll just put them zero zero you can see <clears throat> that it's really starting to take shape already maybe we put another line just to differentiate everything here and then we can add more text underneath like so and then i'm thinking maybe we put an image in so let's just stick another one in and you can see this takes shape within literally a minute Personally, I prefer this whole setup to the standard portfolio anyway. And then I would put a boilerplate at the bottom. So let's just call this boilerplate, put a H4, and then we'll just trim that down. So essentially what a boilerplate is, is a call to action at the end of every blog post or every portfolio item that says to your user, okay, you like what you see? Here's my email. Here's how to get in touch. Here's how to book a call. Here are my social links, stuff like that. So if we add plus and then social, we move these over to the left. Let's just say here's my Instagram and here's my LinkedIn. Oh, must have got that wrong. LinkedIn.com. Okay, there we go. So people can access your social media profiles nice and quickly. So then if we hit save, we've got project one live. We've got our intro, details, a bit more detail, an image of the project. We've got a boilerplate. And then what we then have is a template. So if we want to replicate this over and over again, we just click our three dots, we click duplicate, and then we go again. So we edit, do everything that we've just been through, and you've got basically a limitless portfolio. Now, if we go back to our portfolio page, you can see view project takes us straight in to project one. 
nobody is any the wiser. We get this beautiful setup that's clean and clear for anyone coming onto the website, you know, what the project is, how to view more, how to get in touch, and we don't have to stick within a 40 project limit. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and check out all of my Squarespace resources in the description below.